Hello YouTubers, I'm going to show you how to um, get a pretty good working GEOS system on your Commodore 64 with a couple of blank disks and how to transfer an app to a blank disk so you've got some room to save like things like documents and pictures you've drawn with paint um, I'm going to be using the SD2 IEC so you're going to need to do this, you're going to need one of these if you can see there, it's hard to get the focus yep. I've got the external version like in my other videos going to need SD card for this video I'm just going to use a um, can't get it to focus a 512 megabyte one make sure that's like that. You might not need this on yours, but on my computer I need a um, SD reader. Some of them have got SD built in, like laptops, a lot of laptops these days have. Or you might have the built in SD reader on the front of your tower. So the first thing you're going to want to do is plug your SD card in. Now, I've got something on here, so I'm just going to format it. So, if you need to format it, then pretty easy. Sorry about this, I um, put the tripod the wrong way. Yeah, so, it's on the H drive of mine. So you just go to right click and um, format, if you need to. Keep it as FAT32. I put the volume label as Commodore 64, quick format. Some people recommend slow format. Most of the time, quick will just do. It will ask you formatting all the ways. Yep. I'll we'll click OK on that. And there you go. Format complete. It was quick. OK, you want to close that window. Right. No. You're going to need to download these files. geos64.d64, spell64.d64, wrutil64.d64, app64.d64. You should be able to find these on Commodore 64 websites. They're the main four disks. You're going to want to get Far Browser 64 as well. If you just Google File Browser 64, you should find that quite easily. Uh, first thing you want to do is copy that FB64 or FB or whatever you've downloaded to the root of your memory card. So you just paste it on. There it is. Now, if you want to make a new folder, sorry about the focusing issues. New folder. Call it Geos. Put it in um, lowercase because the Commodore 64 defaults in uppercase. And then you want to go into that folder. I'm really sorry about the focusing issues. Camera's been a pain. See if I can get it any better. Right. So you want to do is copy all these D64 disks onto that okay now once you've done that get the last one press copy press paste now do it again press copy press paste and again copy Paste. These will act as your disks that to use in GEOS. So if you want to rename that to one or something, I'll call it one for easiness. Call that one two. You'll see why in a minute. And three. That's three disk blank disks to use. Now you want to make a new text file on the memory card in the same folder as well
Now, what you need to do is quite literally type in this. So you want the first one to be Geos 64. I'll do it in small letters. Geos 64, D64. Apps 64, D64. Spell 64, D64. WR Util 64.D64. Then your disk images. D64. 2, D64. 3.D64. You can have that going, you can do loud, so I've only done three for this example. Do it in that order, make sure Geos is number one. Right. Now, what you want to do is save as, make sure it's in the H drive, and call it autoswap.lst, and before you press OK or save, change that to all files. Now press save. Now, that, with any luck, should be an LST file if you've done it correctly. And that's all you've got to do on this part of the PC part. So once you've done all that, you can go ahead and safely remove your memory card. I'll make sure you've closed everything, like notepad and everything, before you do it, because it will complain if you don't. So you can safely remove hardware. Now, onto the Commodore 64 side. You can take that out the PC. There we go. Right, on the Commodore 64 side, if you pair up your Commodore 64 and put your newly created SD card into the um, reader, and then just to make sure it's worked, you can do it directly. Low dollars, comma eight. Yeah, and you should see your files. FB64 in GEOS. I'll zoom in so you can see it a bit better. Or bring the camera forward. Right. So you can go ahead and load in FB64. So load FB64, comma eight. That will load in nicely. Run. Now, if you scroll down using the arrow keys to GEOS or the joystick and port two, yeah, press enter on the GEOS directory. Now, do not press any of these. What you want to do now is you need to press Q on the keyboard to quit. I'll show you why in a minute. Auto swap list is there, make sure that's there. Uh, yeah, and you've got your one, two, threes. If you just press Q on the keyboard, it'll take you back to basic. Now, before you do anything else, press the disk swap button. That's the one nearest to the cable. Once, should flash for a second and then go off. Now, that's put geos.d64 in your drive. Just to confirm, you can do a directory listing again. And as you can see, Geos is there. So what you want to do is load the Geos operating system now. Geos, comma, A, comma, 1. And that will load Geos into the computer. You're going to need to plug your joystick or your mouse into port 1. I'm not lucky enough to have a Commodore 64 mouse. And please bear in mind, Amiga mice do not work in the Commodore 64, so I've already tried. You cannot use an Amiga mouse. Oh no! Okay, something's gone wrong on mine, so I'm just going to try that again. It always happens when I'm filming. Oh dear. I've got the red flashing lights of death. I think plugged in okay. It is an old memory card, it might need a bit of a clean. I'll try that again, shall we? Sorry, 
64 in it. Try that again, shall we? It always happens. So, oh, yeah, do not touch your joystick if it's in port 1 on Far Versa, it resets it. Make sure it's in port 2. The reason why I've got it in port 1 is because that's what Geos uses. Alright, so quit from here. Let's try that again. Press the button once. Um, Just from the eight, run. Oh dear. Alright, oh, done, that's not good. Let's have a look at the thing here. It must be, must be eight, come on. Try again, shall we? It's the first time that's ever happened, actually. But this is a old 5 to 5 megabyte. See if it works this time. Green light's still on, so hopefully. There we go, that's looking more like it. Okay, we're in the operating system there, but obviously the system disk is in there. But the clever thing about the SD2i is the disk swap button. All them auto, them disks we put in that auto swap dot list, are all on the touch disk bottom. So if you remember, the next one would be apps. Does that once, and then if you click onto close, and then go back into driver, you'll notice it's changed the disk. So the applications disk. Okay, now you can see on the applications disk there's only 5k free, so these GeoWrite and GeoPaint applications are pretty useless because it's not a physical disk drive, so you can't um, like save on it. So what I'd done was I dragged that onto the desktop, that onto the desktop, and then close the disk, press the disk swap button again, it should be the um, spell disk which it is but we don't want that at the moment, so press it again, the last one is, right, on mine it's PDS test. Oh, I know what I've done. It's because I renamed my right utils. Anyway, on yours you'll find it with right utils, but press it once more after that. You can see I haven't prepared this video good. You should have. Yeah, another copy of it. So this is this would be that one dot d sixty four. So what you're going to need to do is go to disk format. Don't forget all your formatting is that 1.d64. I'll call it 1. Now with any luck that should format that disk. Now for some reason Geos crashes out at this point. So all you gotta do restart again. It's something to do with the formatting. So we load this again. Go back into it. Press Q here. 
Cloud, Geos. I'll press the button once first, I forget. Now Geos back up again. Nice cup of coffee. Wait for Geos to boot up. There's probably simpler ways of doing this, but this is just a way I figured out last night. So, if you just press the button again once, the this swap button, find them applications again. You can actually just double click, just click on that. Yeah, you'll see that they're down there anyway. So what you want to do is press it, I think it's one, two, three, and hopefully that should have found your disk. We will say that, non geos disk, and there you go, you've got your blank disk. Now you can drag them into there. It won't move them, it will copy them. Now here's the complicated bit. The, it might be wise to write that auto list or print out that auto list because now we're at one, so the next disk is gonna be two, three, then it's gonna start back at Geos and then applications. So you've gotta press it till it gets back to applications. So it's two, three, start at the beginning, Geos, applications and you press OK. If you've found the right disk, it will work. Which, yes, that's found the right disk. So as you can see, the LEDs are flashing. Now, you've got to swap. The Commodore 64 believes you're putting in a disk and taking out a disk and putting in another disk. It's disk swapping, basically. But you, you're doing it on this, with this button system on here, in emulation. So you've got to try and find that disk one again. So your applications, you've got GeoSpell, Geo right, and then it should be one, hopefully. Yeah, I've got it right. And it will ask again, because it can only fit a certain amount in memory. So, so it's root one, two, three, Geos, applications. If you get the wrong disk, it would just say it anyway, so it's just on and hour really. That's why it's wise to write down that auto so you know where you are. Um, so we're at applications, geo spell, geo write, and one. Now you've got to find your geos main boot disk, which is so we're at one, two, three, geos. Press OK. Now you've got to put your one disk back in. I know it's a bit of a. So, Word Geos, Applications, Spell, Right Utils, and One. OK. And there you go, Geo Write is now on your new disk. You can do the same with Geo Paint. So if you're ready for the long-winded process again. Find applications, so we're at one, two, three, Geos applications. Every time you press that button it swaps the disk to the next one on the list. You can't see it do it, but it does. So we're at applications, we want spell, what your tools one it will always go down the list it will never go back up the list so once it gets to the last disk it will go back to start 
Maybe one application. So we're at one, two, three Geos applications. Obviously, the more disks you've got, the more you'll have to go through the list. So we're at applications. Spell, write, one. Now you find your desktop disk. One, two, three, Geos. Okay. And it asks for one again. So that Geos, applications, spell, write your tools, and one. And there you go, there's your new disk with both GeoWrite and GeoPaint on there. You can put other applications on there, of course. And it's also got 92 kilobytes of free. And you can run them direct from your new disk. And as you can see, you can write a new document. Call it whatever you want. And that's basically it. Unbelievably, you can even, if you add your fonts, I haven't got mine on here, but you can change your fonts, unbelievably. Alright, now just exit that and it will save it to your new disk. No, it will say put your Geos disk back in because you, I presume your new disk hasn't got the files it needs to in Geos. One last thing to mention, if you go back to your applications disk again, I would don't press that while it's accessing the floor like I just did. Yeah, you can put them back in there. They haven't, they never did move from the disk anyway they're just it's just so you can get them from one disk to another and there it is i hope you enjoyed the video goodbye